Assalamu alaikum. Zawaj Sharif here. Welcome you all to TV News. You've just heard the Crown Summit headlines. And let's move on to the details. Chief Justice Ubadul Hassan has resigned from his position, said Dr. Asif Nuzrul, the interim government's advisor on law, justice, and parliamentary affairs. His resignation letter reached the law ministry. Then they sent it to the president without delay to take necessary measures. There are some formalities to complete after which Hassan will submit his resignation to the president this evening. Earlier, the full court meeting of the Supreme Court got cancelled as students raised a two-hour ultimatum for the resignation of the Chief Justice and other justices of the appellate division today. <laughs> students marched towards the high court premises, demanding the resignation of the Chief Justice, other justices loyal to the autocrat Awami League, and restructuring of the country's judiciary. Meanwhile, the mass uprising leaders are not accepting the appellate division justice Ashfaqul Islam, who has been appointed as the acting chief justice. Meanwhile, five justices of the appellate division have reportedly decided to resign. Mass uprising leader Hasnat Abdullah said the protest of the students would continue until the chief justice and other judges of the appellate division resigned. Chief Advisor of the Interim Government, Dr. Muhammad Yunus, has said it is the responsibility of all to build the new Bangladesh. This is a responsibility to build the new Bangladesh, he said, after meeting family members of martyr Abu Said in Rangpur. He said that all have to come forward to build the new Bangladesh, remembering the supreme sacrifice of Abu Said and others. Abu Said is the son of all families in Bangladesh, he said in this regard. Dr. Yunus said students will remember Abu Said when will pledge to to be like him. He also said that Abu Said is now in every house of the country. The martyr belongs to the everyone, irrespective of their religion and background, he said. The chief advisor urged all to remain vigilant so that there is no anarchy. The interim government chief said that protecting all respective of their religion is the responsibility of all. <laughs> Law advisor to the interim government, Dr. Asif Nuzrul, has said that the duration of the government formed through mass uprising has not been determined yet. The government will stay in power as long as it is necessary to reform the state. এইটা মেয়াদের ব্যাপারে এখনো কোনো কথা হয়নি আপনাদেরকে দুইটা জিনিস মাথায় রাখবেন কাইন্ডলি সেটা হচ্ছে রাজনৈতিক দলগুলোর প্রত্যাশা থাকবে যে যত তাড়াতাড়ি সম্ভব নির্বাচন আবার এই দেশে সাধারণ মানুষের যে সংস্কার আকাঙ্ক্ষা সেখান থেকে প্রত্যাশা থাকবে এই সরকার যেন জরুরি কিছু সংস্কার করে যায় কারণ আমরা দেখেছি অতীতে পুলিশ বিচার বিভাগ দুর্নীতি দমন কমিশন সহ বিভিন্ন রাষ্ট্রীয় প্রতিষ্ঠানকে এমনকি পাবলিক বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়কে এগুলিকে জনগণকে নির্যাতনের ওয়েপন হিসাবে ইউজ করার চেষ্টা করা হয়েছে আমরা এই সমস্ত প্রতিষ্ঠান থেকে কিছু কিছু ভালো সার্ভিস পেয়েছি এই সমস্ত প্রতিষ্ঠানেও কিছু কিছু ভালো মানুষ আছেন কিন্তু পুরো সিস্টেমটা এমনভাবে দাঁড় করিয়েছিল যে এগুলি আপনার ভিন্নমত পোষণকারী মানুষ মৌলিক অধিকার চর্চাকারী মানুষের জন্য এই প্রতিষ্ঠানগুলো একটা আতঙ্কে পরিণত হয়েছিল তো এই সংস্কারের আকাঙ্ক্ষা মানুষে আছে সংস্কারের আকাঙ্ক্ষা এবং নতুন নির্বাচনের আকাঙ্ক্ষার মধ্যে সমন্বয় করে যেটা যতদিন থাকা দরকার ততদিনই থাকার আমরা থাকব বেশিও না কমও না Industries advisor Adil Rahman Khan has firmly declared a policy of zero tolerance against corruption in the activities of the ministry. He made these remarks during a meeting with officials of the Ministry of Industries in the afternoon. A lifelong human rights activist Adil Rahman Khan said that the current interim government took charge through a bloody mass movement, so there is no room for accepting corruption. He said that the interim government will address the corruption allegations, including those related to the Savar leather industry and other issues within the ministry. BNP Standing Committee member Saladin Ahmed is finally set to return home tomorrow after spending over nine years in India's Shillong. The Assistant High Commissioner of Bangladesh in 
Guwahati issued his Prat travel pass on August 6, clearing the way for his return. After remaining missing for 62 days, Salahuddin, a former state minister, was found in Shilong, the capital of the northeastern Indian state of Meghalaya, in May 2015. He was arrested for entering India without valid documents and charged under the Foreigners Act. Salahuddin was abducted from his home in Uttara in March 2015 by individuals posing as detectives. Shilong court acquitted him of the charges related to his illegal entry. Shopping malls in Dhaka City has been reopened with assistance from BNP leaders and activists. Dhaka City South's BNP unit leaders are in charge to follow the instructions of BNP Acting Chairman Tarek Rahman to bring back normalcy in the city. The city's Motale Plaza has been reopened after a meeting with shop owners and BNP leaders in the morning. <laughs> এ দেশ পরিচালনা করার জন্য অন্তর্বর্তীকালীন যে সরকার আছে সেই সরকারকে সহযোগিতা করতে হবে যারা আইন শৃঙ্খলা রক্ষার দায়িত্বে আছেন তাদেরকে আমাদেরকে সহযোগিতা করতে হবে আমরা সকলে মিলে ঐক্যবদ্ধ হবে একটি সুন্দর বাংলাদেশ গড়তে যাই আমাদের দায়িত্ব হচ্ছে আপনাদের জানমালের নিরাপত্তা দেওয়া এই কাজটা করছি এই কাজwidetilde আপনাদের সহযোগিতা দরকার আমরা আপনাদের সাথে আছি দল আপনাদের সাথে আছে জনগণ আপনাদের সাথে আছে আপনারা ভীত হবেন না not to have enough, it is up to there, up to there, but up there, and the bad I got when Operations have resumed at 538 police stations out of 639, approximately 84 percent across Bangladesh, according to the police headquarters. Manul Islam, Commissioner of Dhaka Metropolitan Police, told the media that around 60 percent police personnel joined office at DMP headquarters so far. The number will increase from tomorrow. The most of the police stations have resumed to work in metropolitan area, he added. Of the 110 police stations in metropolitan areas, 84 are currently operational. In the districts, 454 of the total 529 police stations have begun operating today. International News, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has welcomed the interim government in Bangladesh led by Nobel laureate Professor Muhammad Yunus. He welcomed the swearing-in of Dr. Yunus to lead the interim government in Bangladesh News, Blinken said in this regard. Sharing a brief message through his social media handle X, he said, the United States support his call for calm and peace. Blinken said that the U.S. remains committed to working with Bangladesh as it charts a democratic and prosperous future for the people in Bangladesh. The United Kingdom has welcomed the appointment of the interim government in Bangladesh led by Chief Advisor Professor Mohammad Yunus. The interim government has the UK support as it works to restore peace and order for the sake of the Bangladeshi people, British Foreign Secretary David Lamy said in a statement. He said that the people of Bangladesh deserve accountability and a peaceful pathway to an inclusive democratic future. London urged all actors to prevent further violence and loss of life, Lamy added in this regard. And that is all from the newsroom for now. To know updates and videos of this bulletin, please visit our website www.ntv.com. Besides, visit our YouTube and verified Facebook page for updates about NTV's all popular programs and bulletin. Our next bulletin, Shundar Kowal, appeared in Bangla at 7.30 p.m. Thank you for being with us and have a good time.